as he was wandering through it with lots of other men around him all wandering through it too no one's making eye contact with one another no one wants to admit to the man next to them they're in no man's land together yet if they did we'd be able to help each other get out of it because on the other side of no man's land is what we call the promised land hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the powerful man show i am your host doug holt with my co-host, the founder of the Powerful Man Movement, <laughs> Tim Matthews. Ah, oh, <clears throat> I like the original one. We just we <laughs> yeah, well, total transparency. We just jumped on a minute ago, and Doug introduced me, being like Tim Matthews. I'm like, what's that? That sucks. So we've come on again, and you, you've changed it still. I have, uh, I have. Uh, I like change. Change is a good. Yeah, thing. me too. Yeah, we just get to roll, roll with it, right? You still are the powerful man. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome, that means buddy. a lot. You are. I'll sleep well tonight. So, Tim, when, before we got on uh, to hit the recording button, we were talking about a subject that you wanted to bring to the table. Do you want to take that away? I would love to take that away. So, <clears throat> I had an enrollment conversation with a, an amazing man on Saturday. And this is someone who has been on the fence with us for about 12 months. <clears throat> and, oh, my God. On the call, his his whole body was just, you could see, you could visibly see the tension, the overwhelm, and the frustration that he was experiencing. His hands were fidgeting. He was rocking back and forth. He was rubbing his hands through his hair. He was, he, he was frowning. And he, was, he was rubbing his eyes. Things had reached boiling point for him in his life, <clears throat> whereby he knew it was so obvious to him that he was playing so much smaller than he knows he's capable of playing. And that's then having an effect on his family, on his relationship, and on his own personal happiness and fulfillment. So much so, he's actually shrunk his business back. Now, it got to the end of, uh, well, towards the end of the conversation. And I just said to him, look, you have two choices right now. The way that I see it is you either accept it, accept that this is the way that life is going to be for you and just stop putting yourself through all of this pain and turmoil and lower your standards and make peace with that. Or you change. Mm. It's, 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 it's really as simple as that. Stop putting yourself through the, the hell and the torture of comparing yourself with the man that you know you could be if you are not willing to make the commitment to change. And what did he say? He said, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm Good in, man. I'm doing Good it. Man. You know, I've got to do this. I've got to well, look. In all honesty, it was a silent pause for about, uh, well, seemed like about five minutes, but in reality, probably about a minute or two. And obviously, you know, I, you know, my office, Doug, I've got a stand up desk. So I was just walking about and we could see each other on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So I was walking about very detached from it, just watching him really. And yeah, it, it was like a volcano that was ready to erupt. And in the men that we work with, they are, they're all kind of like that, aren't they, in the early stages? And they either erupt, they're going to erupt. It's inevitable that they're going to erupt. And they either erupt by choice or by force. And when they erupt by force, it's that involuntary action where they then snap at their kids or they're short-tempered with the wife or they sabotage the business or they shout at the staff or whatever it is. And that sets off a whole cycle of then sedation and sabotage and so on because they feel ashamed. Or they can erupt by choice and choose to call forth on a power that's already inside of them and step forward with it in a very controlled, conscious, and confident manner. And, you know, this guy obviously chose to step forward, which is fantastic. But I think for him, that was the real wake-up call. Look, you have a choice. Lower your standards, drop the expectations, stop comparing yourself to a man that you could be an ideal, or change. And it's really that easy, right? Uh, you know, for a lot of these guys that call up... and. I it's really about making that change. Now, Tim, when you have these conversations with men, I'm sure you run into it at times where some guys are like, you know what? I'm just going to, it's the idea of change is too scary. I'm just going to stay the same. Does that ever happen? Yeah, of course. You know, <clears throat> our, um, 
you know, usually about six, six to seven out of every 10 men usually go into the programs. It's about a 60 to 70 percent um, enrollment rate. Uh, but yeah, of course, some people choose to step away from the line. And, you know, honestly, Doug, I can only make guesses as to why that is. Obviously, they throw up all the usual excuses such as, you know, money or time or whatever they want to try and, you know, put the reason on. But we all know that's not the real reason because, you know, money's definitely not a question. You know, it's if they've gotten to this far in the process and gotten to a call with me, it means they have been... Like maybe some of these guys listening to the podcast, digesting emails, seeing ads somewhere. Um, you know, the ads are very specific. The, the messaging we put out there speaks to a very particular businessman. So, you know, usually I, I'd, I've never really come across a case whereby, or it's very rare that I come across a case whereby the men literally cannot find the money, whether they don't have it or credit or friends or family or savings or w- whatever it is. It's very, very rare. So, a money excuse isn't really valid. Time, hmm, you know, the reality is <laughs> when change becomes a must. Omar, for example, you know, one of the men in the Brotherhood, um, amazing guy. We've spoken about him on, on various podcasts. If you want to edit out his name, Billy, <laughs> that'd be good. But when Omar joined the program, it was amazing because, you know, he was um in an hour in whether to join and he was throwing up all these excuses around time. I'm going to be in Hong Kong. I'm going to be in this meeting. I'm going to be in that meeting. And I didn't know this, but at that point, his wife walked in the room, shoved his credit card in his face and said, do this now. Because she could see the the pain that he was putting himself through by being in this torture of comparing himself with the man he knows he's capable of being, yet not taking the action. Well, that's, they say that's the definition of hell, right? Hell is where you go to meet the man you could have been, right? The wow. possible greatness and the powerful man, right? So if you go to hell, you get to meet the powerful version of yourself that you could have been, and that's the pain, most painful thing. Wow. That's, uh, <clears throat> I heard you say that the other day, and when you said it just now, it really, really struck me because, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you realize that a lot of your – you know, the lies that you told yourself as to why you had to wait or why you couldn't do things or why you weren't good enough were just that lies. Whether you've, you know, you've tried to fit into a paradigm that your father handed down to you about what it looks like to be a man or what you must do in order to to make money or what success must look like or whatever it is. We spoke about this on previous episodes, didn't we? You know, when you actually are trying to... um live in a way that is aligned to somebody else's way of life, not actually yours, not actually setting your precedent for what you want and who you want to be, but instead kind of coasting through life almost asleep. So yeah, I mean, hell, that definition of hell rings true for me so, so much. I mean, I was in this place. You know, before I hired um, my first mentor many years ago, <laughs> I never used to understand. I used to think that, you know, just buying info products was enough, you know, like these 97 pound or 49 pound, you know, eBooks or whatever were, were going to be enough to really get me the result that I wanted. And I invested in, in everything outside of myself. I invested in the marketing, in the sales, in the people, in, in all sorts, but I never invested actually myself. And looking back, I think it's because I never used to value myself enough. And I was so used to putting my needs last, you know, by sacrificing myself in business and working crazy long hours and slogging myself in the gym. And I used to see everything as a real chore. I've got to do this and I should do that and I need to do that. Like I had to fight my way to the life that I wanted to have. And as a result, I, I, I also delayed my happiness for some point in the future that when I achieve a certain point, that's when I can be happy. But until then, I've got to suffer. <laughs> and um, I think that fed into me not, not investing in myself. And I get it, you know, that first investment I made, I made in myself was a, was a leap for me. A leap in time, in, in vulnerability, in, in money, in the risk of failure as well, the cost of failure. Because if you were about to, you know, do something that you really believe is going to help you, 
then it's almost like, well, what if it doesn't? Well, I don't have anything to fall back on then. Mm. Um, so I understand it when some of these men, you know, step away from the light. I get it. It can be scary. Change can be scary. Yet I really encourage them to not continue putting themselves through turmoil and suffering because that is just continuing the cycle, which then takes them away from the family, takes them away from the business. Just, just lower the standards. If, if that's going to be the way, that's okay. You know, that, that is completely fine if you want to lower your standards and step away from the line, but don't, don't be in no man's land in the middle of, of where you want to be and, and where you are. Guys, I'm interrupting this episode because I want to know, do you feel bored, burnt out, or broken? Discover the system that over 300 businessmen are using to let go of the grind, find inner peace, and unlock unlimited personal power so they can have more time, more intimacy, and better sex while living a life they love without stressing about work or feeling like a fraud. Head over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash 11 to see what this is all about. All right, let's get back to the episode. Define, yeah, define no man's land for the listeners. So when we, we call no man's land in the powerful man, it's, it's a place where a lot of men exist when they first come to us. And in no man's land, they've really been, or they're in the process of being ran out of their pack because what they've done is they've very much been a lone wolf. And in the process of being a lone wolf, they've often used aggression and dominance and insecurity to really lead their pack. And if you imagine like a pack of wolves, the alpha wolf often isn't the most dominant one. He's got it within his locker should he need to call it forward, yet he often sits very quietly in amongst the pack, letting the pack do their own thing. And every once in a while, you'll get that wolf that comes along that tries to exert his force on the rest of the pack and he'll try and do it with aggression with dominance and almost rule by tyranny and what happens then is he's then ran out of his pack and usually a lot of that behavior underneath it all comes from the insecurity and in with the with the men that we work with when this happens to them they get run out of their pack in many ways whether they you get handed the divorce papers. You know they're about to change, yet they come home and there's a letter on the table for them has the wife's name, uh, has a wife, the wife's handwriting on it, their name. Open it up. It's the divorce papers. They knew it was coming, but they chose to ignore the warning signs. They could be run out of the pack with their team, with their staff. They could really attract a players and then end up just sabotaging it all. And when they do that and they end up in no man's land, they experience five agonies. And this is something that you know we've. We've gone back and we've reflected on the hundreds of men we worked with, and we've seen a pattern in this. And the five agonies that the men experience and cycle through one by one, the first one is emptiness. You know, they've really believed that, you know, that the answer to everything was to make money. That, that was a way in which they were going to be the man and get the significance. And they've, they've strived and they've hustled and they've pushed and they've forced and they've grinded it out. And they've sacrificed the health happiness and relationship and no matter what they achieve it's just never enough so they end up first agony emptiness and then it moves to the second agony of uh, anger because they then don't understand how to handle the emotions that are bubbling up within them think of the volcano they erupt by force or by choice and as a result they then start to experience fits of anger whether that anger is expressed at their loved ones or at their staff or whether they do it at themselves in silence. But either way, there's, a, there's an undercurrent of anger just bubbling and it usually comes out in the ways that the family or the loved ones least expect it and the people they love end up walking on eggshells around them because they never know what father, what man, what husband is going to walk through the door. Which then leads to the, leads to the third, third, what I can say it, third agony of shame. Because they are acting in a way that they know they don't want to, and in a way that they know is hurting the people they love, yet they don't know how to stop it. They try so many times 
to control this anger and change their ways and they make all these promises that they're not going to work late tonight. They're going to come home early, but one thing or another happens and they stay, stay there late. They miss the school plays, they miss the birthdays. And over time, the family just end up making plans without them because, you know, the, the wife isn't going to stand by and let the kids continue to pay the price for this. And as a result, the shame and the guilt builds and the only way that the men often now to deal with this is to sedate, whether it's through alcohol, social media, porn, drugs, working, you know, working even longer hours. There's many ways, which then leads to the fourth agony of loneliness. They then pull themselves away from all of the people that mean something to them. You know, they actually then start to isolate themselves. And as a result, they again, just fuel this cycle. And they tell everyone else around them that, that it's all all right. Or, well, rather, everyone else around them tells them that, you know, you've got the ideal life, you've got the perfect life, you've got the, the home, the holidays, the money, the family, the business. You should love it. You should love it. Why don't you love it? <clears throat> Which piles on even more of the feelings of shame and isolation. Because at that point, they have no one around them that they can turn to and speak to. No one gets it, which then leads to the final agony of uncertainty. You know, they know that the people around them are not going to put with this forever. The staff, the wife, the kids. So they start to pull away and come up with a plan B. You know, this cheating crosses their mind. Whenever another woman pays them attention, they then start to think about leaving the wife. Scenarios go through their head because the business has become the surrogate wife. That's the easiest place to be. However, even that is uncertain because they're starting to resent the business for that they blame it a lot for the situation that they're in. And the tougher it is at home, the more they work. And that then leads to, again, it fuels the uncertainty and they really start to risk losing it all. So that's no man's land in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and it's a great nutshell. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing a lot of the men listening to this can identify with it. In fact, Tim, last night um, I went out and met with um, a guy. And this is exactly, you're describing exactly what he said, not only himself to a lesser degree, but also one of his good friends, one of his mates was he went out with and he was describing this exact protocol of agonies, you know going through all of these things, turning to work, married with kids, relationship not working out. And guess what he turned to? Of course, another woman. And we were talking about that and, uh, and the no man's land that he ended, that he, his friend, I'll just say his friend, to give him some anonymity, his friend uh, ended up being in. And it was all about standards. And one of the things he said to him, which I think I'd love to hear your opinion on, he said, Doug, no one's talking about this. No one out there knows. And so this guy is just kind of wandering aimlessly in a lot of pain and suffering. And he's ashamed and scared to tell anybody anything. And obviously he confided in this guy that I was with. Um, but he said, hey, I could just see the pain that he's in, the absolute yeah. agony. It's a heavy burden to be in no man's land. You know, I've been there. <clears throat> You've been there. You know, many men have, have been there especially when you're, you're a guy that's really focused on growing and being the best he can be as well. The chances are you'll cycle through no man's land from time to time, but to a lesser degree, and you'll realize you're in it and be able to move through it quicker rather than a lot of the men like the guy I spoke with on Saturday. He didn't even know he was in it, so he didn't know how to get out of it. But as, as he was wondering through it, with lots of other men around him all wondering through it too, no one's making eye contact with one another. No one wants to admit to the man next to them they're in no man's land together. Yet, if they did, we'd be able to help each other get out of it. Because on mm. the other side of no man's land is what we call the promised land. <clears throat> you know, And that's where they experience the five freedoms and the five freedoms of peace. And on the other side of the emptiness, agony number one is the first freedom of peace. On the other side of agony number two, which is um, the, the anger, is power, where they've got you know, energy and they're alive. And the other side of agony number three, which is shame, is pride. Agony number four, which is loneliness. 
the other side of that is presence. They're actually able to be present with themselves and their loved ones. And then finally, on the other side of agony number five, uncertainty is production. They've, they've actually got purpose in their life because they know who they are and what they want. And they've got a balance to their life, which enables them to be able to actually bring that to fruition. And it's, it's <laughs> the, 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 the gap between those two, the journey from no man's land to promised land, it's not as big and as scary and as wild and, and hairy as people often think it is. I think, you know, in, in the world that we live in today and in the marketing that we often see, we're often led to believe that we've got these great big gaps and it's really scary to be able to move from one to another. It can be scary, but it depends on the story that you're telling yourself and who you surround yourself with. And if you actually... Yeah, in my opinion, do not lower your standards. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the world needs you at your absolute best. Your family needs you. Your kids need you. Your wife, your your staff, you. You you will create a huge ripple effect around you, which will impact hundreds, if not thousands, of people. And you're probably already making that. And you might already be making that, but it might be a negative one. You are needed. So do not lower your standards. Consider this a rallying call for you to stay, stay strong with the standard that you're moving into and then take that leap. Whatever, wherever it is that you're thinking about making a decision and making an action to create the change and create. Because one of the beliefs that we have as a powerful man is that you're already a powerful man. You really are. You've just forgotten how to be it. It's not like you're going to transform into this superhero no imagine leonardo michelangelo or leonardo da vinci whichever one it was chipping away at the statue of david you know someone asked how did you create this and he said david was already there i just had to chip away everything that wasn't him mm. so so true so tim i mean there's so many nuggets here um i love the information you're dropping for the guys if a guy finds himself in this situation not just no man's land, but in a situation of complaining and having the same complaint, let's just say more than three times about his life, about changing his wife, his situation. What advice would you give to him? Hmm. What advice would I give to him? What's it costing you not to change? Mm. Like if this continues, like be real with yourself. Remove the positivity for a moment. Don't allow the positivity to mask the reality. But if this continues to happen, really, what, what is the price that you're going to pay in the people around you? Like how is the relationship with you and your, your wife or whoever it is, how is that going to play out? Are you, you going to end up getting divorced? Is she going to end up blaming herself? Are your kids then going to pay the price from having you know, a broken home with two parents that are both at war with one another and both in pain and in shame within themselves and within each other? And then if that does happen, and let's say you've got a daughter, what's the standard that she's then going to look for in a man that she wants to marry? Mm. I say to her that you want her to marry a particular guy, but the reality is she's going to marry a man very similar to you. Your son, what kind of father is he going to grow up into? Do you want to be a grandfather at 70 years old, 80 years old, watching the same patterns play out in your grandchildren that you today could have chosen to stop? Because what you don't take on, you pass on. So you either do the work now, so your kids and the people you love don't have to, or you stand by and watch as everybody else continues to pay the price. So profound. So gentlemen, this is your call to action, right? As you heard here right now, if you made it this far, where are your standards? Either lower your standards and accept the position you're in. You are a culmination of the, th the thoughts and decisions you've made in the past, as Tim has said, or raise your standards and step up. Step up to the line and be the powerful man that you know you are. 
Tim, such amazing, amazing words of wisdom. I really appreciate it. Gentlemen, as always, we'd love to continue the conversation with you. Uh, go over to our free Facebook group. Uh, it does require registration to get in. We do try to keep that community nice and tight. Just go over it. Just do a Google, uh, excuse me, a search on Facebook for the activation method, which is our, actually our flagship program. But the group, like I said, is free. It's just a place for men like you to continue the conversation, share what's going on in your world. And uh, what I'd like to know is where are your standards now? If I look at your life from an outside perspective and outside looking in, what would I say your standards are based on your results? All right, guys, that's a wrap for the, this episode. And we will see you next time. Have an amazing week. 